boy, come and get me. Come here. Oh, he's a good boy. Look at him. Look Last at him. night we stayed at the Watson Mill Bridge State Park. It's a beautiful campground with full amenities. Now this place is off the trail by a few miles, but in our opinion, it is well worth it. We've added a waypoint for this place, and even if you don't choose to stay here, we would recommend visiting just to check out some of the sites. For example, the landmark for which the park is named, Watson Mill Bridge. It's a 236 foot town lattice type covered bridge and the oldest in Georgia of this type. We spent a good deal of time here and couldn't help but take a ton of photos, some of which are definitely going to be framed. Before we left, we had to drive through the bridge. If you've never driven through a covered bridge, you need to do that sometime. It's an interesting experience that somehow connects you to the past. When you do, keep your windows rolled down. The smell of the wood is part of the experience. Once we'd done this a few times, we hit the trails again. We were ready to see what else we could find on the Georgia Adventure Trail. We had barely begun our day when we ran into our first issue. Just a few miles into the ride, we approached the first waypoint on the map, a water crossing. But what we found, instead, was a locked gate. All right, well, this morning we've uh, come down to a waypoint here. This is where the uh, water crossing is supposed to happen, but this is what we're looking at. There's a closed gate. This is private property. I would assume that sometime after uh, after V-Man 1313 got the trail put together that somebody came along and, and bought this piece of property, put up a gate, closed it off. Um, the signs are pretty specific, road closed, private property, no through traffic. This is a legit gate and a, it's a serious chain and lock on it as well. So. Um, we're going to have to backtrack, move our way around. And th this is the type of thing that happens when you put together an adventure trail. Something like the Georgia Adventure Trail. We've seen the same thing on the Florida Adventure Trail. You know, you get it all laid out. You've got it all set up. Everything's perfect. And then things are always changing. They, uh, you know, roads that were dirt are now paved. Roads that were public are now private. Uh, just like this right here, people come along all the time and buy stuff. And, uh, and then here we are. So we'll, uh, we'll contact V-Man 1313, let him know what we saw here. And um, we'll put the coordinates on here so that you can see exactly which waypoint this Big is. And so then, again, when you're doing these types of adventure trails, you just have to be flexible and expect that you're gonna reach uh, points and places like this where you have to back up, adjust your plan a little bit and just make it work. It's no big deal. But heads up. This
We pushed through this day in hopes of getting to the Chattahoochee Oconee National Forest. This is where the trail becomes mountainous and we had targeted several dispersed camping waypoints in advance. Our hope was that we would be able to find a campsite right on the river and that's exactly what we were able to do. This not only gave us some great water sounds at our campsite, but it allowed Tiffany to get some large flat rocks. She pulled these out of the river, washed them, then put them on the fire. She and Brian were working on a truly spectacular meal, which was built around huge ribeye steaks that had been marinating in whiskey all day. They cooked these steaks on the river rocks over the fire, then added grilled peppers, onions, mushrooms, fresh green beans, and some mac and cheese. It was truly the most amazing camp dinner we've ever had. We ended the day around the campfire with full bellies, listening to the howling wolves in the distance. As day five began, we knew that we would finish the Georgia Adventure Trail. We had been looking forward to this day because we knew that this section of the trail is filled with amazing things to see and do. We packed up early in the rain and then hit the trail. A few miles off the trail, we found Tacoa Falls. It's located on a college campus and is a great place to get out and stretch your legs. The trail from the parking lot is only about 100 yards and is paved. Falls are 186 feet tall, making them the tallest free falling waterfall east of the Mississippi. The weather was cold and wet on this day, but we were not going to let that slow us down. We were not going to miss out on these amazing sights just because of a little rain. After we left Tacoa Falls, we got some amazing food at a local favorite called Bell's Hamburgers. We strongly recommend this place. We love the small town atmosphere and the great southern food. When we got back on the road, we found ourselves driving by Curahi Mountain. It's the same mountain that we had driven to the top of earlier that day to enjoy the overlook. It was really cool getting to see the same area, but from a different point of view. Once we reached Lake Reuben, we knew that we were getting close to Minnehaha Falls. This was a waypoint that we had targeted in advance because of the rave reviews it gets. 
the Georgia Adventure Trail brings you right to this stop. So don't make the mistake of passing this one by. There's a five minute hike to the falls and it is well worth the effort. As the sun faded away, we finished the final miles of the Gat. This section is a beautiful area filled with winding mountain roads that head in all directions. In fact, it's in this area that you'll intersect with a different trail, the Georgia Traverse, while you drive alongside the Tallulah River and past a very famous water crossing, the Tallulah River Crossing. This river crossing is one of the most filmed areas in North Georgia and is worth checking out when you come through. Now I mentioned that this area intersects with the Georgia Traverse and the Dirty Bunch Jeep Club visited it in October of 2022. We explored the east half of that trail. In the description for this video, you'll find a link to the video that we created at that time. Now we plan to return in October of 2023 to complete the west half of the trail and because of that, we decided that as we finished the Georgia Adventure Trail, we would take a few more days and scout the Georgia Traverse heading west. In the next few weeks, we will publish videos about our exploration of that section, and you do not want to miss that because we found some amazing areas and some fantastic trails. We simply cannot say enough about this area and are very thankful that V-Man 1313 chose to include this section when he created the Georgia Adventure Trail. Now, speaking of V-Man 1313, we thought it might be a fitting way to finish our videos by hearing directly from the GAT founder himself. Hello everybody, it's V-Man1313 aka Tony coming to you today with a quick video about my routes, trails, loops that I've created and shared on my Google site and V-Man1313 Facebook page. Before I start, I do want to make a note that I created these routes not to be off-road, not to be technical, not to be hard. These are overland style, off pavement, dirt, sand, gravel roads that most cars can travel on when it's dry. I will say, I do recommend four-wheel drive. I do recommend a little bit of high clearance especially after a lot of wet days those trails can get a little bit hard sometimes in certain places for the most part they're made to be overland style trails 
where you can travel long distances. The trails are all between 200 and 600 miles. And so they're intended to be traveled for a few days and without stopping for supplies and without stopping for all kinds of things. Now I will say that there are some places such as South Georgia where you're not going to find dispersed camping very easily, if at all. Um, there's a lot of areas in the country, especially out here in the east, where it's just private land and you're just not going to find that dispersed camping so you might have to hit campgrounds and such. But for the most part, they're intended to be traveled with all your supplies with you and as remote as I can get them. You can find the GPX files and KML files over on my V-Man 1313 Adventures group Facebook page or on my Google sites. I'll have links on the screen. I'll have site, uh, the links are on uh, the Facebook page, page and especially on my YouTube channel. Most of my videos have the link down at the bottom where you can find the GPX or KML files. I also have videos on how to download if you're having troubles, how to download and install those files. If you feel compelled, if you feel like, wow, what a great trail, if you really enjoyed it, if you feel like throwing a quick tip, I do have PayPal tip jar. Every time I get a nice tip, I'm like, dude, I gotta make another one, I gotta make another one, I gotta keep this going, I gotta keep this going. So, you know, if you feel, you know, you don't have to, I'll share these for free. But if you just feel like, wow, that was awesome, I really enjoyed that, I want some more, throw a quick tip, everything helps. I really do hope you enjoy the trails and the routes. Uh, tread lightly, get out there, leave it better than you found it. Uh, these are not, again, not intended to be off-road trails. Please don't, don't get off the road. These are public roads that I have put together. So, you know, be mindful of that. Tread lightly, have fun. Be safe. V Man 1313 out. Now, I mentioned that near the end of the Gat, you pass the Tallulah River crossing. It is not part of the Georgia Adventure Trail, but it is part of the Georgia Traverse. So, as bonus footage, we've decided to include something that we've not seen on anyone else's videos a night crossing of this section.